Hey Alchemist, I hope that you had an incredible start to your astrology and energy new year, which started on March 19th with the equinox. April is going to be filled with a lot of powerful change. And the themes for April are actually change and opportunity. So there's going to be a lot rising up to the surface because we have an eclipse. We have a special planetary alignment that doesn't happen until every 14 years. We have a super new moon. So there's a lot that is going to come up to the surface during April. And so one of the key things to remember is that change and opportunity is going to be the main theme for this month. And if you remember my energy update from January, I said that 2024, time was going to accelerate and things are going to be changing very fast, lots of events happening. And that's why in January, I suggested that you take some time to reflect on what are the main, what are your main values? And these values are what's going, are what are going to carry you through April. And of course, it's always important to know what your values are and we should already know that. But because you're always changing and evolving, uh, your values are going to change. So if you haven't done that, then before April starts or the first week of April, focus on what are your priorities and your values for this month because there's going to be a lot of opportunities in the area. You don't want to miss those opportunities or you don't want to get distracted by things that are not in alignment with what you actually want. One of the first things that happens, and I'm going to look at my notes here, That's um, I have them down here. One of the first things that happens this month is Mercury goes retrograde on April 1st. So the beginning of the month, we already start off with activity. So Mercury is going retrograde in Aries. And so what this means is we're going to have to take action. Usually during Mercury retrogrades, you know, you kind of want to spend that time planning, reflecting, but because it's in Aries, the sign of action and fire. Also, we're going through a rebirth period period right now because of the equinox and the eclipses. So right now rebirth requires you to change and requires you to act. But what is important during this Mercury retrograde is to take one step at a time. And then after you take that step, that action, then reflect um, what happened as a result, as a result of that, because every action that you take creates changes to the timelines. You're existing here. Yes, but you're also existing in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth dimensions and beyond. So when you choose to make that phone call, when you choose to go to a specific place, that already starts to shift the timelines. Like it's every single action that you take. And so for this Mercury retrograde, take these actions, but then pause and see what are the ripple effects of this? Because timelines are going to be very malleable during April, which means that you're going to be able to influence time and space in an exponential way rather than a linear way. And so just be very mindful after every action that you take to pause and to see what has shifted around you. So that is going to be really important. And of course, we're in airy season and some of us are really feeling that fire energy. So don't be impulsive. Like, yes, take action, but don't be impulsive and always reflect before you are speaking or before you are taking action. So this Mercury retrograde happens from April 1st until April 25th. But then remember that there's still the shadow phase, which means that Mercury is still going to continue to affect us. That's until May 13th. So May 13th is when we'll start to sort of get out of this sluggish energy and where we have to be extra mindful and cautious about our actions. So then we have the 4-4 portal on April 4th. And this portal is actually connected to Krishna and Yeshua. It's so fascinating because last time I did a live like this, actually, I think it was on the 4-4 portal. And some of someone on the chat said that on, the, on April 4th is when a, a sect within Christianity, that's when they celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, of Yeshua. And in my experience in the past, connecting with the 4 4 portal, all, Krishna always would come through. And Krishna and Yeshua are actually members of the same oversoul. Like they're just different fractals of the same oversoul. So I thought that was super beautiful. And the 4 4 portal, if we think about numerology 4, what does it look like for you? If you were to actually like draw it on your hand, what would it look like? 
uh, you would probably draw a house, right? And four represents foundations and strength. And your foundations and strength are going to be shifting a lot during April because we have the eclipse. And it's not just a typical typical eclipse. I'll get to that in a moment. But this is a total solar eclipse happening on a super new moon. So it's just like extra dynamite into the fire. So for this 4-4 portal, that's a good time for you to create stillness. Because numerology works with time, then it's important for you to add the space component to that portal. So create space in your, in your home, in your routine, to take some time right there to really establish strong foundations so that you can withstand the changes that are gonna be coming into your life throughout the rest of April. On that same day, Venus enters Aries, and this is a time where your relationships are going to start to take center stage. And because it's on the 4-4 portal, this energy is going to be also extra influenced or, or heightened. So be bold in your relationships, you know, ask that person out or like maybe do end that relationship but don't be impulsive so be bold but don't be impulsive like that's the that's the key here for this aries season and happy birthday to all you aries and all you tauruses out there it's so cool right now there are 44 people live when we were talking about the 44 portal again so much synchronicity so much magic flowing in from march into april this energy will continue to remain active let me know in the comments have you been looking up at the sky and seeing the iridescent clouds like there is little sparkles of green, bluish, and purplish uh, cosmic energy that some of you are able to see, or you'll be able to see like rainbows in the, in the clouds. Some of you will actually feel your hands buzzing, like you will feel the electric energy flowing through your hands or maybe through your body, maybe getting some itches, uh, itchiness on your scalp. That's just because the eclipse portal and the equinox portal are open right now, allowing more cosmic energy like neutrinos, neutrons, and photons, um, allowing more of this cosmic faster moving particles to come into our planet and so that's why we're going to be seeing changes in our sky and you're going to be feeling that in your own body someone's saying i see blue dots ears off the scale yeah the ear ringing and buzzing i definitely feel you on that yes i've seen blue orbs especially around the last eclipse yes rainbow and purple color too and so this there's like a lot of blessings flowing in right now and that's why i was saying the theme for april is change in opportunities. So focus on the opportunities that are arising right now. And it's very important for you to remain focused on like your own path because um, you know, there's a lot of different opportunities out there. There's a lot of distraction too. So you have to practice discernment. What is on your path to work with? Um, because right now timelines are being affected too. So you wanna make sure you're on that highest timeline. And I'll get to that in a second uh, with the eclipse. So this, the total solar eclipse happens on April 8th. And this, again, it's not just like a total solar eclipse, but it's also on a super new moon. So usually when we have eclipses, they can either, either be partial eclipse, annular eclipse, hybrid eclipse, or a total solar eclipse. And this one on April 8th is gonna be a total solar eclipse, which means it's gonna be extra powerful. A solar eclipse is happens during a new moon. New moons are typically a time for starting a new cycle, for setting intentions, for manifesting, and because this is a super new moon, like this energy is just heightened and building up, but it's also in alignment with the equinox portal. So the equinox portal was on March 19th when we started summer, excuse me, when we started spring in the northern hemisphere and fall in the southern hemisphere. And it's not just in March that that portal sort of closes, it's still active. So this solar eclipse portal is leveraging on so much energy and it's going to be super powerful so that's a date that you want to add to your calendar to make sure you focus on spending time reflecting meditating manifesting and just any way that you feel guided intuitively connected to that energy because it's super powerful and you can receive so much benefit not just in this physical material plane if you're having health issues if you're having financial issues if you're having health issues 
but also it will help you to align your energy with all of the different versions of you across the dimensions. So if you've been feeling kind of stuck in your spiritual journey, maybe you haven't been receiving that many messages or you haven't felt a lot of peace in your life, that is definitely a day for you to switch that around and take advantage of the new opportunities flowing in. The other piece of magic is that this total solar eclipse which is also a super new moon, happens on Monday. And Monday is governed by the moon. That's why it's named that way. So it's adding to this extra boost of energy because it's governed by the moon. And this is actually known as the Great American Eclipse because it'll be, this is an eclipse that will be able to be seen from many areas in the United States. Also, this is actually the most visible uh, solar eclipse that we've had in the United States in the last 100 years. And it's not no accident that Pluto is in Aquarius within the United States birth chart and that hasn't happened in over 200 years. So right now the US is going through so many changes and it's expected if we actually just look at the astrology of it. One of the things that I was sharing at our astrology workshop two weeks ago was that or was it last week i feel like i feel like time has been so strange let me know in the comments has time been really strange for you either moving super fast or moving very slow i've experienced both sides of that and so something that i was explaining at the astrology new year workshop was that i was really skeptical about astrology like i didn't believe in astrology and it wasn't until I started to feel and, and see the themes in my life and in my energy body with the astrology overall and the planetary movements that I was like, oh, wow, OK, this is actually affecting me. And then over time, as I started to learn more about astrology in this lifetime, because a lot of us worked with astrology and so many of the of these other esoteric practices metaphysical practices in past lifetimes my guides would tell me hey just look at the sky and you'll know the path forward so really astrology is sort of like a road map and it's going to show us what's coming forward and that's the purpose of this april energy update and every energy update that i do it's just sort of setting the stage for what's possible and how you can work with this energy it's not con the energy the astrology the portals are not controlling you, they're influencing you, and they're not controlling you. But if we can work with them, work with the cosmic flow rather than against it, then life just becomes so much more graceful and smoother, and we actually get to enjoy this human experience. With this eclipse, I asked, what are we meant to become aware of for our most optimal potential, like for, for our community? And I got this phrase, transcend through realms so there's two meanings behind this the first meaning is that because the veil of the between the dimensions is extra thin during the eclipses it's easier for souls to transition so you may notice that loved ones both humans and both animals are transitioning and going through their death and rebirth process the other meaning behind this phrase is being able to influence your timelines so let me just quickly look at my notes going into other dimensions and to timelines because this is what's going to be affected by the eclipse now time it looks like it's something like that is rigid right that it's fixed if you look at your watch there's going to be 12 uh, different numbers but if we actually look at the fifth sixth dimension and beyond like one minute within this physical earth plane can actually be um, 30 hours within other dimensions and that's why um, sometimes our guides are able to do so much in such little earth time because time works differently across the dimensions which and you you are existing beyond this linear material 3D time space. Your soul exists in other dimensions, which means that you are not bound, you are not controlled, you are not limited by time. And you can work with this eclipse to influence your timelines in a conscious and intentional, empowering way. If you're curious to know how, more so how to do this in a clear and practical way, I invite you to check out the Golden Age Alchemy Academy. So this academy is our signature 
advanced program where you learn how to connect with your multi-dimensional wisdom. Yes, like you already know that you exist in different dimensions, in past lives and future lives, but in the academy, you actually learn how to access that yourself. Because one of the things that really stressed me out was when I was going to learn from all my different teachers, when I was learning from my spirit guides, it was kind of difficult to understand concepts as you read a book or as you hear a lecture from someone. But when you actually experience accessing a past life, accessing a parallel version of you, you're able to understand that. Not just at the mind level, but you understand it at a soul level. And that consciousness is not something you're gonna learn about. Consciousness is not something you're gonna think about. Consciousness is something you have to become. You have to experience it itself. And so I'm super excited because we only open enrollment a few times a year. Last time we opened enrollment for the Golden Age Alchemy Academy was actually November of last year. So it's been a long time and we decided to open it this year to align with the astrology and energy new year that just started in March. So this is a great time for you to embrace new beginnings, to really embrace also your rebirth. Think about the phoenix. The phoenix rises from the ashes and eclipses this solar eclipse that we're going to experience we're going to see a fire ring around the sun and it's a reminder for you to connect back with that power and so the purpose of this golden age alchemy academy is not for you to learn extra stuff no like there's plenty of stuff out there no it's for you to actually take the time to become your own healer and your own psychic so that you're not relying on me for energy updates you're not relying on other podcasts and videos and books etc you're not paying other people for healings for reading Meetings, it's so that you can actually do that yourself and we all have these intuitive abilities and it's really important for us to sort of work together to evolve in this way like all teachers had teachers I still have teachers I'm actually going to uh, Machu Picchu I'm going to Peru in the next three weeks to go learn from a grandmother there uh, she's actually the last a living priestess of the Caro nation, which are the descent, the last living descendants of, of the Incas. And so it's really important to continue to evolve in this way. And so if you're interested in learning how to become your own healer, how to become your own psychic, by opening up your psychic abilities safely, by learning how to access past lives, future lives, and parallel lives, I invite you to check out the Golden Age Alchemy Academy. You can get more information in the description of this video. Enrollment is only open until April 12th. And we we do cap the number of students. We take every enrollment period to 22 students because we want to make sure that we provide the quality support and we maintain the integrity of the experience. Like you're actually going to get to be, uh, access your own past lives and it's very important that it's done in a safe way and that you understand everything that you're doing. That's why it's limited in this way. So. I invite you to check that out if that resonates with you. So with this solar eclipse, the solar eclipse is in Aries within tropical astrology. And so again, this fire energy, not just showing up from the sun, the, the solar uh, fire red, red ring, but also within our astrology, within the constellations. And so with this fire energy, it's really important that on the solar eclipse day on April 8th, that you have to make sure that you are not getting into arguments. Um, try to avoid getting frustrated. The reason why we're doing this energy update is so that we can all prepare for what's coming. One way to prepare for this is make sure on April 8th, whatever appointments, whatever plans, projects that you're planning on focusing on on April 8th, make sure those are things that are going to fuel and nourish like the trajectory, the path that you want to move forward in in 2024 because timelines are going to be really influenced by this. This is one set of eclipse uh, cycles. The next eclipse cycle is actually going to be in September, October. So these eclipses, they influence us for six months. So on April 8th, make a schedule for what are the th projects, what are the relationships, what are what are the things in your life that you want and you need like extra boost of vitality, extra boost of support for the next six months. So plan that day and focus on the things that are really important to you. Within Sidero Astrology, this solar eclipse is in Pisces and it's fascinating because Aries is the first sign of the zodiac and Pisces is the last sign. So with the solar eclipse being on 
in areas within tropical astrology, this is April 8th is also a good day for you to start something. Not necessarily like start it legally and, and signing contracts in that way. If it is, then you have to practice discernment, but it's a day where there's going to be a lot of heightened vitality and life force on our planet. So it's a good day for you to start maybe a new idea, maybe a new workout routine, maybe a new habit in your life. So focus on that. But then within sidereal Vedic astrology, the Pisces energy is is calling us to focus more so on our spirituality, more of our intuition. Your intuition is going to be super heightened. You're going to have dreams about things before they happen. You're going to just know things, not knowing how, but you're just going to receive the messages. Because remember how I told you, are you seeing the little cosmic sparkles that are flowing in, the greenish, bluish ones? Or maybe you're feeling the electricity tingling in your hands um, or in your body so it's not just cosmic energy we're receiving but that's also those are also like little energy packets so think about like when you plug in a usb into your computer okay most of us don't do that anymore but just imagine okay imagine like back when we used to plug in a usb drive into our computer there would be that electric connection right that's why it's made of metal and so Right now, with these cosmic sparkles, our energy body is sort of like the computer and those energy sparkles are the USB stick. So the, that's information coming in and we have to take the time to receive and integrate and unpack that information. Like just like a USB stick, right? You had to go to a folder, open the folder and then open the file you were looking for. Well, with this cosmic energy, yes, you're gonna be receiving activations and information and messages, but you have to unpack them too. Like you have to open up the files, you have to go read and look at what's being sent over to you. And all of us, because we all receive information through seeing, through knowing, through feeling, to, through sensing, you have to find a way that works best for you. And again, that's something that we dive deeper into inside of the Alchemy Academy. You learn how to open up your psychic ability safely, all five of them. And what's what's really one of my favorite things about the Academy is that people learn how to channel because it's impossible for me or any one person out there to channel everything that's out there. Because when more of us learn how to channel it with discernment, with accuracy, we're then able to expand more and evolve faster. And so... Take time to connect with your intuition in whatever way you you get your information in the easiest way for me is sometimes through meditation, sometimes through writing, and sometimes I just receive stuff and it comes out and I have to write it down, otherwise I'll forget. That's why I have my notes right here because I knew I was going to forget a bunch of stuff that came in. Before the moon starts her new cycle, it's completely pitch dark. That's also an opportunity for you to do a release. So if you didn't get a chance to work with the Libra Eclipse, maybe you weren't you weren't in the proper headspace to do it, then do some type of release with this solar eclipse before you manifest, before you start something new. Because you don't want, you know, the old stuff that's weighing you down coming in with you with these new manifestations and this new cycle. And again, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. It signifies endings. So think about any ending that you need to create in in your life. So right between now and April 8th, you should be thinking about all of these things. What do I need to bring an end to? What is limiting me from having more freedom, having more peace, having more clarity in my life? And then, so once you think about that, good, write them down and then focus on releasing that on April 8th. And after you identify that, then focus on what do you want to nourish for the next six months in your life? Because think about a rocket ship, like a rocket ship uses a lot of fuel. I can't remember ex the exact percentage, but let's just say like 80% of the fuel is used by the rocket during its first launch and then it just goes with momentum. Like right now, use the solar eclipse energy to have that extra boost into whatever thing that you've been kind of finding it difficult to gain momentum in, uh, whether that's a relationship, whether that's connected to your health or to your career. All right, and then more great news is that on April 20th, Jupiter is conjunct Uranus in Taurus. Now this is a meeting, a rare meeting of the outer planets. And this is pretty rare because they move 
pretty slow as the, as the planets get further and further out so that only happens every 14 years and because it's happening in Taurus both of these planets are going to be in Taurus when this alignment happens it's Taurus is connected to our finances our physical body our uh, self-worth are the value that we have um, and so this can bring breakthroughs in your uh, finances in your self-worth so you can expect and like call in because we're always manifesting so call in epiphanies breakthroughs when it connects to these two realms because uranus is also sort of about getting out of your comfort zone it's all about change freedom and innovation like it kind of has like a very combustive energy just be mindful when it comes to that relating to your finances this is also a really lucky day for manifesting so april 8th and april 20th those are going to be really lucky and wonderful days for you to work with manifesting and setting intentions for what you want to co-create into your life then we don't catch a break because immediately the day after Juno goes direct so Juno is not a planet Juno is an asteroid and Juno is the the asteroid that governs our relationships when it comes to power dynamics and a deeper aspect of relationships Juno went retrograde in mid-January and it's going to go direct on April 21st so it's going to go direct in Virgo and with Juno affecting our relationships, spend some time like deeply, deeply reflecting on power dynamics within relationships. How is the respect in, in your relationships? How is the giving and receiving in your relationships? Like if you're having any relationship issues, whether that's with family members, with friends, with coworkers, with uh, your partner, this is the time to be reflecting on those questions to bring back more harmony and more expansion into that. And then on April 21st, that's likely when you're going to see big breakthroughs, big epiphanies, big heart openings. Expect more clarity coming in around your relationships then. we end the month off with the full moon on april 23rd so this full moon within tropical astrology is in scorpio and this full moon is sort of like a final cleansing for the month because if you think about april april is going to be like a swirling storm but there's going to be a lot of opportunities within that storm like it's just when i say storm i don't necessarily mean something bad i apologize i don't have a better um metaphor and, and an example for this but basically imagine like if you are in a um, in a hurricane or in a in a tropical storm there's just like branches logs trash everything moving around and so that's what eclipse is going to be but not, it's not just like branches and trash and, and and all these things flying around but there's also going to be so many opportunities flowing in and so that's why you have to practice discernment and be very focused on finding those opportunities for yourself with this full moon on april 23rd it's gonna calm the energy of april so after april 23rd you'll notice that the the things in your life are going to start to slow down the dust is going to settle and things are going to slowly find their place scorpio represents death rebirth and transformation and alchemy so make sure you're working with that alchemy piece and alchemy just means transforming energy from one state into another so use that final extra full moon energy to clear out anything from the month so you can start off may in a more grounded place so then within sidereal astrology this full moon is in libra and libra is a sign of balance and harmony also relationships so you may notice that some relationship things still need um, more clarity or m need more healing or more releasing because that's what the full moon represents and it's important to use this uh, full moon energy to sort of calm the energy down typically when we think about full moons like the energy always rises up right if you think about if you were to go to the ocean you always see the the waves rising up on full moon similarly the waves within ourselves um, our emotions rise and heighten during the full moon but for this April one, it's sort of like going to be the opposite. Work with that full moon energy to calm things down in your life, to find back a flow and a balance so your life stops and adjusts 
to the energy of Mar of of May because April is going to be very chaotic, right? It's going to be very volatile, changing very fast, and then you want to use that full moon energy to sort of calm that down and stabilize it so that you can enter May more focused and also in a more harmonious and empowered place. Because when we're always chaotic, when we're always going 100 miles per hour, that can be not just overwhelming for your nervous system, where you're always like in fight or flight mode, you're always anxious, you're always getting food cravings, you're feeling overwhelmed because your to-do list never ends. So that's a good opportunity for you to calm down and, and sort of take a pause. So those are the main astrology events, the main energy events for April. And again, the theme for April is really about change and opportunities. So within the change, find the opportunities available for you. And I am wishing you an empowering month ahead. I hope to read your application for the Golden Age Alchemy Academy. And one of the reasons why there's an application process is because we do very advanced techniques. And so we just wanna make sure that you're ready to work with these techniques and that also it's sort of a two-way interview process that you know that this academy is the right next step for you on your path. And the purpose of this academy, yes, it, it is about alchemy, but we also primarily like the first two parts because the academy is divided into four parts. The first two parts of the academy are all about practicing internal alchemy. So how do you master your thoughts? How do you identify the thoughts that are holding you back? How do you identify the subconscious fears and doubts that are holding you back and keeping you stuck? And then in part two, this is where we transform those blocks and this in part two is where you master your emotions so part one is mastering your mind part two is mastering your emotions and then part three this is where you start to practice high magic with the elements so in the academy we practice elemental alchemy which basically means working with fire water air earth and light to transform energy so all of the elements are found inside of our bodies and all of the elements are found everywhere externally and so when you learn to become one and master the elements not manipulate a lot of people get that wrong you have to master the elements that's how you're able to influence everything externally and that's exactly why the egyptians the people of Kemet were so evolved and advanced they weren't just evolved spiritually but they had such a thriving political system, social system, agricultural system, uh, economic system, like they were just so advanced and evolved because they understood their relationship to the external world, rely on their internal world. And that's why they actually created temples just to master one element. Like there were fire temples, there were water temples, air temples, sort of like Avatar. You have to learn to master the elements. And once you do, you can literally change everything in your external world. And so that's the intention for this academy, for you to really um, call your power back and have more control of your internal world and then practice high magic where you're actually influencing the external world. I, I can give you a quick example of this. Like you see in the Marvel and Hollywood movies, you can make things invisible. You can access the multiverse. You can call in fire without needing a candle. All of these things are very possible. My students know how to make things invisible. My students know how to manifest instantly. For me, I was born into a family of mediums and that's how I got my gifts because my great grandma, she had been struck by lightning. One of the reasons why I choose not to share that is because I don't want people to think like, oh, you have to come from a lineage to be able to do the, these things. And so in the academy, I've actually shown these students how to do it themselves so they can do it too. These abilities, they're all within us. It's sort of just about unlocking them and tapping into them. Just how you learn a new skill. You have to learn how to do it. It's the same thing with astral projection, with um, advanced manifesting, with sex magic, with practicing high magic. It's something you have to learn. And so if you're interested in uh, learning how to use ancient Egyptian alchemy to transform your inner world and transform yet your external world so you can have more peace, not just in your spiritual life, but also in your material life, I invite you to apply for the Golden 
Age Alchemy Academy. The, there's more details in the description of this video. We're starting off the uh, new astrology year, the new energy year, the year of the dragon. So it's gonna be a really empowering cohort and I hope that you can be a part of it. I hope you all have an incredible April and thank you for shining your light. Thank you for choosing the path of awareness. I will see you soon. Much love. Bye.